the lifestyle I live, it wasn't no payoff. I pay it. Matter of fact, I'm paying right now. I have five trucks. Three, four girls and one boy. The oldest are ten, and the youngest is seven. All about different women. You know, I was dr drugging, dealing, and I don't seen a lot of money, cars, a lot of materialistic things. But when it all came down to it, I lost a lot of things too, like family, freedom, and I lost too much. I lost a lot. Oh, well, a lot of relationships I had in my life went downhill. My whole life went downhill. Uh, I couldn't function right. Um, I've lost not only uh, not only people that that were good, you know, good friends in my life, you know, going because there, there were some people in my life that were good friends, didn't use drugs, you know, always did try to help me. Those friends, I've lost all of them. I've lost most of my family. My family's well. A lot of the consequences started at an early age for me. I mean, at 16, I had my first child. I lost most of my parents in the last five years. Me and my kids. Uh, Relationships. I don't have one with them. Um, I have a little daughter that I'm not able to visit with her at all because of the crime I committed at the time when I stayed with them. The first time I went to the penitentiary was almost as if I was going to kitty land. You know, I was, I left home for nine, nine and a half months. You know, went down on a Tuesday, felt like I was back on a Thursday. I have a son that's 20. His name is Terrell. I have a son that's 13. His name is Antonio. I got a daughter named Letitia. She's one. Um, I also have a daughter that's nine. Her name is Poteria. All of them are, are different women, you know. The drugs sort of put that mask over your face like it makes you think everything's going okay. Like it, it blinds your eyes. You think everything's going okay, but the whole time things around you are just falling apart. But you don't see it. Most of my years have been either on parole or probation. It took me seven years to get off parole or probation. And I was off for two years, and now I'm back in the penal system. All my cases have been alcohol or drug related. Lost plenty of good women that was in my corner. Mistrust of a lot of friends and, and family members. But I kept it. I didn't put it out there. They knew I drink and they knew I smoke, but they never knew that I did, you know, snorted cocaine or, or laced it with marijuana, things of that nature. But for my drug habit, I lost a good woman, the mother of both of my kids. I lost respect for myself. My family lost respect for me. You know, this is not my first bit. This is my third bit. If I keep my old ways of thinking, I know I'll be back. I tried to live a life of crime, but I failed, all right? And I'm really all right with accepting the fact that my life and my career as a criminal, it didn't work out. Can anybody agree with that? Okay. Mine didn't work out, all right? Even though I was trying my best to make a profound commitment to being a crook and a criminal and a drug addict. I swore I was going to do that for the rest of my life. I loved it. All right. I honest to God loved that lifestyle that I was living. But I had to come out. All right. One of the reasons why I had to come out, I could no longer handle the payoff from drug use, alcohol use, and my criminal activity. Okay. I couldn't handle the payoff.
All right. When I looked at it real close, I was always in the same position over and over again. All right. Right now we're in therapy, right? What is this for is a big question. All right. Me personally, I went through treatment three times. Is there anybody in this room that has been through therapy or incarceration more than once? Okay. I got some teammates in here. All right. One of the reasons was I wanted some of what therapy had to offer, but I didn't want all of it. All right. I didn't want all of it. I could see myself giving up alcohol and drugs. I could see myself uh, giving up street corners. But I could not see myself giving up gambling, giving up carrying a pistol, giving up some of my old friends. I didn't want to give them up. All right? When I was in therapy, and I'm, I'm hoping that all of you are doing this right now, I had to sincerely think about what it was I was doing and how I was truly living. Because, see, it got to a point where I was always experiencing a consequence. Okay? Always experiencing a consequence. One was being in treatment. Another one was being in jail. My addiction took me to the point to where I wound up homeless. Anybody in this room ever been homeless, had to sleep outside in parked cars, abandoned houses, stuff like that? I had to do that. I was an embarrassment for my family. All right? My family would see me coming and just start shaking their heads like, here he come again. All right? It got to a point they did not want to hear what I had to say, nor did they believe me. Okay? I had to understand something when I got to therapy. I began to look at my relationship with alcohol, my relationship with drugs, and my relationship with crime and understand something about this. Even though it was something that I claimed that I enjoyed and I prided myself on my abilities under the influence of alcohol, under the influence of drugs, and within my criminal behavior and lifestyle, I prided myself. I thought that I was a success when I was involved in this behavior. I thought I was really doing something. I thought I was really living. I thought I really had it together. While I was in therapy, I had to do a thorough inspection of my relationship to these three things. And I found out that the only payoff that I really received, and I have to understand, what is the payoff of alcoholism? What is the payoff of drug addiction? And what is the payoff when I'm involved in criminal activity? All right? My payoff is I receive isolation. I receive loneliness. I had a nonstop, constant sense of failure. I was also an embarrassment to my family and my loved ones. It was a very humiliating experience because, see, while you're incarcerated and while you are in treatment, you are a grown man, right? You got people telling you when to go to bed. All right? You got people telling you when to turn on a television, when to turn a television off. You got people telling you to sign in and sign out. All right. I had to also understand that addiction and criminal activity was a very degrading activity. And I had to understand that. And I had to accept that. I also had to look at addiction and criminal activity in this respect. It was definitely a death activity. Everything that I involved myself with died. All right. When you use drugs, when you drink alcohol, when you involved in criminal activity, everything dies. All right. This was a death activity. And I looked at my life and just like a dead person, I was starting to slowly decompose. Who knows what that means? Deteriorate. All right. No matter what I tried, it never it never panned out.